Hello, Phil Moore here from the Litmus Test. Um, you're about to see a very interesting interview with Shimon Moore, my son, but a word of warning. There is a bit of language in this. In fact, there's a lot of language in this. So if that offends you, or if you've got kiddies in the car or something, watch it another time. Otherwise, enjoy. Hello, welcome to this special interview of the Litmus Test with uh, singer, musician, actor Shimon Moore, who also happens to be my son. Yeah, good day. Um, for those who don't know, Shim has been the singer and uh, guitarist with the band Sick Puppies. Just to give you a brief history of the band, you started like you were 17 years old and you won Sydney Unearthed. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the bands that won Sydney Unearthed. From that, you got a record deal here in Australia, released your first album. Mm -hmm. That took you overseas to the US, living and working in LA, where... Not straight away. Not straight away. It took a few took years. took a few years, but we got there. It took a few years. But then um, eventually, while trying to get signed with a record deal, you had a management deal. Uh, but you, one of the songs, uh, all the same, you put to a video that you'd shot, which ended up becoming the Free Hugs video one of the first ever huge viral videos on YouTube. And from that, you finally signed a deal with Virgin. Virgin, and you've now released three albums in the US and around the world. And as of last year, and you've had from that, you've had number one singles, platinum records, top 10 singles and albums and the whole deal over in the US on the rock charts and alternative charts. Yep. And the pop charts. And the pop charts. One on the pop charts. Maybe. Yep, yep. That, that, that broke through. On the pop charts. Uh, but you left the band last year and you're now working on solo projects. Yep. Right. I don't want to talk about the band too much or what you're working on now. Okay. okay. Cool. This really is about your experience in the US as well, a musician. Well, it's, they're good. There's a lot of it by now. You know? Okay. So let me go back to when you were 17 and you first went to the US. What was the experience like? Oh, no. When I first went to the US? Yeah. When you worked here and you went there, what was the change? What was the difference you found? Uh, um, well, I was 22 when we first went over. Uh, the obvious change was, you know, we went straight to LA. Everyone was doing what we were doing, which is not the same as it was here. They were, like, it was hard to find a club to go to, let alone people at the club that were doing what you were doing. Half the people were just there to get pissed and watch the footy. So there wasn't really a scene here. There was a scene in LA. Um, and by here we mean Sydney. Sydney, primarily. yeah. And Sydney had, I mean, I think, I don't know anymore. I'm a little bit out of touch. Uh, I've tr been trying to get back in touch since I've been back in Australia a lot more often, but um, Melbourne has a very big, bigger scene than Sydney in certain terms and certain styles of music, but um, I still, I'm a Sydney guy, I love Sydney, I, I've been out to a lot of the places that are around now and it has gotten better, but it's never going to compare to LA because of the population. Um, so what is it about LA? It's the population. It's not a, there's not some big psychological cultural shift. There's just more fucking people. Like there's literally, there's literally 10 times more people in the country, 10 times more people in LA. There's, I think it's like, I think there's like 20 million people living in the Los Angeles County, which is this like the size of the entire Sydney area with all the suburbs and all the off like we keep going out 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 it's not just this this the cbd it's the whole like that's la but it's fully populated it's fully like from burbank all the way to the ocean which is like an hour drive in traffic so or two a lot hours more people just so many people so and you've got the music and the <coughs> film industry music there. film industry it's where everything happens it's where people go from the, the we when we went there we had nothing and we rehearsed because you you were you did you were doing well in this country you'd released the first album well this is this is the mentality that we had we had done okay in this country mm. the, ta the time came to do it again and we thought well if we build on what we are doing here it'll take we're going to put all of our energy into it 100 percent energy in every part of what we need to do to make it if we put 100 percent energy here we'll get this far if we put it in la and and really push hard there we could go all the way so the, the obvious decision is if we're willing to go to LA and grind it out, let's go. Because the, the, the possible fruits of your labor are going to be tenfold. So why, why do that? Why not try to do it here in Australia first? Uh, impatience. 
I don't know. Like, um, is it because you're a rock band? Yeah. And that style just was out of favour. Yeah, on yeah. The charts I mean, even like, look, even if you're a pop, doesn't matter what genre. It's, it really does come down to Australia's business equates to 1.6 percent of the global market. What's the point? You know, like really, if you really want to make it, you're going to go there anyway. Silverchair uh, had already broken in Australia before they went to uh, America. They got, they're the luckiest band in history because they just literally went over and there were legions of fans waiting for them because the song had picked up. Most bands, it's, it ain't like that. Grinspoon went over, they didn't make it. Like they went and did all the work and I totally empathize with all of them because they said, well, we can do this much work in Australia and we can buy houses. So mm. why the fuck are we doing this? We didn't have that luxury. So we were like, well, we're going we're gonna to be broke here or broke there. Let's fucking be broke there. <laughs> so we, we just went over and, and we, you know, we borrowed uh, the money off you and I put in the money that I put in and we spent it. And then we had to figure out what the fuck to do next. And luckily at that 11th hour, we got signed to an independent deal.